Hello, hello. How are you doing? Happy Monday. It's the 6th of February. Sea's pretty flat. And as everybody knows, February looking for codling. Always difficult. But I've been itching to get out. It was blowing a gale permanently last week. It's one of the windiest weeks I can remember. It was just anywhere between 30 and 50 mile an hour gusts. And I don't know about you, but I just don't derive much fun from sitting in those sorts of conditions. So I've been mean, keeping an eye on the forecast. The wind's back right off finally, which is great. Low water is half ten, it's about twenty to eight now, so I'm going to fish probably quite a short session tonight, I'm going to fish, I don't know, probably two, two and a half hours, because it is Monday night, I've been to work all day, as I'm sure many of you have, some of you might even be just going to work if you're on night shift, um, and yeah, I don't like, I always get a little bit of a fishing hangover when I've been fishing late at night in the cold. Maybe I'm just soft or maybe it's age, I don't know, but if I'm out too late, I just feel absolutely shattered, so I'm just going to take it easy. Get myself back to bed for about 11 latest and hopefully be all right. So, so we're out, we're on a mark known as Rocky Island, which a lot of Tyneside anglers will know well popular mark it's very <clears throat> just a big expanse of rock fishing on uh, predominantly kelp there's a little the odd patch of cleaner ground further right to the right hand uh, to the left hand side but it's generally considered a heavy ground mark sea's pretty much flat there's maybe a foot of swell and to be honest I'm not I'm not expecting anything, as I say, I just want to, I just want to get out and wet a line because um, it's been a little while since I've been out. If we catch anything, I'll be happy because, as I say, February, flat seas doesn't make for particularly good reading in terms of cod fishing in the northeast. A lot of the fish start to go off to spawn. You do get the odd straggler will the odd late spawn. So what am I doing here other than trying to bait up in a particularly awkward position I'm just putting on the old faithful squid cart a little bit of cart probably I don't know finger thumb size just wrapping it in squid mainly not because I think squid's a fantastic bait for this part of the world but it's more just to keep the scent in the cart and give it a bit more life You'll have all seen it before on these videos, you know the drill, but that's what I'm going for. And I'm just using, I've got a 4.0 Aberdeen Viking Ultra Point in the top, 3.0, sorry, on the bottom, and a 3.0 on the top, just to keep that into position. And you'll see I'm not using a, I'm not using a big bait at all tonight, I'm just clipping that into the splash down there. And because this is a heavy ground mark and there's not much sea, we don't get much tide up here. I'm just using a plain sinker and that just sits on my rotter. Little tip which you might have seen in previous videos, I like to tie the knot to one side of the eye of the sinker and I also like to ever so slightly close the gap on the rotter because I think it just makes it a little bit safer when you're casting. So that is pretty much it. have got the usual, usual four foot pulley set up. I haven't got any bait in the water yet, so you, this is all live, if you like. And you notice I'm using pretty small baits compared to what you might have seen in previous videos, and that's because I basically just don't want to... Well, it's two reasons, actually. A, I want to make the bait small enough whereby any slightly smaller fish can get it. If the fish are feeling a bit, I don't know, lethargic for whatever reason, it's an easier meal to get down. And mainly because we've got a big tide tonight, we're on 0.8 on the tine scale. We're gonna, we are going to lose water 
and on these rock marks on the bigger tides you want to be giving yourself more distance bigger bait is obviously going to reduce your distance smaller streamline bait is going to help to maintain it or is going to help to maintain it so that's the the reason behind that so i'm going to get that other rig ready to go get one out give it a good belt and hopefully we'll come back to you with a fish all right i'm just going to get this I was going to say, I am going to go for distance. When I've just been walking out there, actually, there, uh, there's a bit more colour in the water than what I was expecting, which is a good thing. Made a first mistake of the night. There's always a mistake, or you've forgotten something, or something goes wrong on these rushed midweek evening sessions took me rod out the case and the tip lights I've obviously haven't unscrewed it enough it's one of those ones where you screw it and it comes on and you unscrew it and it breaks the connection and it comes off obviously haven't unscrewed it just enough and it's been on for the last well since me and Gary were down Yorkshire a couple of weeks ago so there's it's just hanging on in there but there's probably not enough of it so you can see see it on the camera so you're just gonna have to have a bit of a running commentary I'm afraid hopefully there's some commentary to give but we'll see so first baits in because the baits are only small I'm gonna give them probably 15 max 20 minutes each just keep changing them regularly it's not like having one big bait that you can just leave on the bottom i'm going to keep keep changing it up casting around maybe move a little bit i've got two guys to me left here about 30 yards away so i'm probably just going to cover this sort of northern corner of it and you never know we might pull something out got the trusty Dymic HST Evo brought back to life courtesy of Stan. Cheers, Stan. Thanks very much. Great job as always. When he built he built the rod originally and he did warn us and said, Do you want us to change that shrink tube? And I was like, no, no, I quite like it. He's like, sure, I said, yeah, yeah. But he was right though, it wasn't great, sure enough, got wet and it wasn't, it wasn't ideal. So he's replaced it with the proper Japanese stuff and it does make a massive difference I have to say. You get so much more of a better grip on it, it doesn't matter if it, uh, if it gets wet. So yeah, you all right Stan. Tide's dropping away very quickly tonight. Got about two and a quarter hours left till bottom water. I don't think it'll be too long until there's, you start to see the tops of the kelp beds for the first maybe five, ten yards out. Something having a little look at that, but it's very small. Could, could well be a crab or a lobster. Whoops, don't want to bring you with us. Right. I'm going to get this first one in. I have had a few, a few taps on it, but nah, nothing on that. Very, very heavy ground out there. But I do think that those plain sinkers do help you get through it a little bit. And of course, those mustard ultra points do have a bit of give and flex in them, which always helps. That's what's left of the first bait. And as you can see there, the hooks have bent a little bit, so they can just go straight back into shape. Get baited up again.
start shifting this gear a little bit further down now. Still the odd reasonable size roller coming in actually, which is stirring the bottom up, which is definitely a good thing. I'm using 55 pound braid, ASO braid, stuff I've always, always used for the heavy ground. I've got absolute faith in it. I always go, well, it's quite interesting when you speak to different people because to a lot of people, 55 pound braid, I do use an 80 pound thick four strand rub and leader, but to a lot of people, 55 pound braid in the kelp would be quite light to them. You get a lot of anglers that will use 70, 80, 90, even 100 straight through. Obviously you're reducing your distance with like using braid that thick. You get other anglers that will use 40 straight through, sorry, 40 as the main line with the leader. Personally, I like to err on the side of caution where I'm fishing the heaviest of kelp. So that's why I tend to find 55s a good balance between giving you a good distance but giving you the chance to get your gear back. Yeah. So they've just bent out and all I can do, get me pliers back in a position and away you go. Check the points, they are still ultra sharp. Hence the name. Absolutely no doubt they'll continue to catch fish, so that's why I personally like to use those hooks. I do like chinos and stuff like that, I really do, but I find the problem is for the ones that are any sort of size, the gauge on them is very, very heavy, and if they do get a fast hold, there's, there's no way you're getting them back. Unless, you know, you might if you're using 90, 100 pound braid straight through, but that's not, not for me. So this next cast, I'm gonna go for decent sized peeler crab. This is the one that I brought on and froze down early on in the spring, probably sometime in April. I'm just gonna lash this on. and go slightly bigger on the bait this time. Get it out. Hopefully. Pull something in with it. I just like to cut them three quarters of the way down. Put my hook in. That's just come out of my flask a couple of minutes ago. And what I like to do is just take the plastic off. Obviously put the plastic back in your box. Don't leave it on the rocks. Squeeze the crab back round. And what you find is if you put it in salt water for even just four or five minutes it will start to defrost quite quickly because obviously the salt water even though it's freezing cold to the touch it's still quite a bit warmer well it's still way above zero so it will start to defrost fairly quickly and what you can find is when you get them in a certain condition they're quite pliable so you can just Position them how you want, around your hook. Uh, what have you done here, David? Something to make life awkward. Doesn't matter, it's sorted. Right. It's like to get plenty on. Through. Oops. God. I'm on a right old laugh with this elastic tonight, aren't I? Right. Second hook down, one, two, three. I like to try and go a reasonable distance into that bait. There you go. We'll give, let's give this current bait another 20 minutes or so. Well, not 20, maybe 10 minutes actually. We'll blast this out. And if I don't get a knock, I'm gonna shift around 30, 40 yards. Just messing around on my phone there and did see quite a positive pull down. Something's definitely just had a go at that though. But as always, pick up the rod and nothing happens. Nope, I'm gonna give that another five minutes. I'm gonna wind in and I think I might just move 20 yards to me left. I've just got a little bit of a hankering for the far corner of this mark so.
and we'll just <coughs> have a bit of a dot around and get some heat back into the system. There's a few little taps here, but with that bait, <coughs> particularly the cart part of it being so soft, you get one or two nips and There's a tiny bit of weight on this, but... Well, I've just got that caught quite close in there. And whatever way it was on it, it was well and truly off. Yeah, definitely paid to check that bait. Absolutely nothing left on that. Right, I think... Because this spot has proved to be fruitless. And there's two blokes, as I say, literally 20 yards away. There's obviously enough bait sent the water around here and there's no there's no happening, so I'm gonna get myself over there, have a little cast due north, see what we can do. quiet so far other than that one bite 10 past 9 so about an hour and 20 till the bottom of the ebb bottom of the ebb still holding out a bit of hope as I was saying before it's, it is tricky this time of year next couple of months particularly up here very quiet March. You do get the odd fish. If you get a bit of surf off the beaches, you might hit lucky, you might get a bass. There is the chance for sea trout as well. Plenty of flounders and things, but summer codlin tend not to come in and take residence in the kelp. We'll kind of, let's say, first, second week of May onwards. Sometimes a bit later. Some years you get them in, in the main. Other years, June tends to be better June onwards when the crabs are in full mold. Because up here in the rivers, the, the crabs will start to peel in April. But obviously the rivers are a fair bit warmer with the mud and the silt and what the open sea is. So you tend not to get the crabs peeling on the open coast until fair to say later than just about anywhere else in the country, excluding Scotland that is, east, east coast of Scotland anyway. So as a result the fishing can be a bit quieter until, until that moulds in full swing but, whoop, it was a bite. Very very much a coley rattle I have to say but, definitely wasn't a codlin. No doubt about that. Oh, little bit of slack there. Yeah, quite a bit of slack. Just want to feel a bit of a nod and then I'll wind into it. It's definitely something having a go at it though. Just got a few bits of slack line there. No, nothing. I'll give it a few more minutes. Wind it in, check it. Right, this one's been in a while. I did have that little little knock before, so it's a bit of weight on this actually. It's 
definitely a bit of weight on. I'm just going to keep it moving as that water gets shallower like that. Come on. Ah. Yeah, straight to the kelp. It's tricky. Come on. Ah, I think it's come off, whatever it was. Ah, it's annoying. There's definitely something on there, but it's popped off in that kelp down there. Never mind. Right, this is going to be... There's weight on this again. Now hopefully I can get it up. It's just that final 20 yards because the water's so low. I'm just going to try and keep moving until you run into the kelp like that. Come on. Very, very tricky. Oh, come on. Just winding straight across that kelp. There's the water so low, and yet again, whatever was on it, there's no longer on there. Tricky, but that is the way it goes with rough ground fishing, I'm afraid. Get this last bait, which is a peeler, a little bit of cart, a little bit of squid, lash the side of it. Whack it out, see what we can do. Unfortunately, we didn't catch anything, but to be fair, like I said at the beginning, wasn't really expecting to catch anything. I was hoping to catch something, but there was definitely no expectations at the night. Flat conditions, not much movement. Getting on past early February now, always gonna be tricky. But I really enjoy getting out at night, to be honest. It's nice just to sneak out for a couple hours midweek, get some fresh air, especially when there's no wind. So it's been enjoyable. But that's pretty much, well, nearly the end of the, the cod season up here. We'll try and do a few more, one or two more videos, even if there's not much chance of catching anything. It's just... Nice to get out and hopefully enjoy seeing bits and bobs of Northumberland and Tyneside and we're just going to take you on the fishing adventures and bring it there in its raw form, whether it's, you know, plenty of fish or one or two good fish or just nothing. British Sea Angling is rough and smooth and there's no getting around that, so that's what we'll aim to do. We'll just keep showing people what we're up to and hopefully you enjoy it. So anyway, it's been quite a nice evening, not particularly good on the fishing front, but that's just it. So as always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like, share. Tight lines, keep fishing. We'll see you on the next one.